the intelligent connectivity the fusion of 5g and iot you now all these three technologies they are quite involved and it takes more time so i have to rush through these slides so it will be having a preamble and some basic idea about iot 5g and ai and at the end we will be looking into what is this intelligent connectivity for the various activities that can be thought of in future to have a smart world so as human beings by nature we are all smart and intelligent this is because we have got senses that is panchendriyas and i have got a remarkable processing capacity with our brains and we can also act depending upon whatever is happening in the surroundings or also in the body so this is the one which is given by nature or god given gift and this we want to try to have with respect to things also the thinking now is networking of objects or things or everything on earth with human beings so this needs really intelligent connectivity and for this the developments in iot ai and 5g technologies they are playing a big role to provide such a connectivity so that we can have really a smarter world to make our living better so if we look into the vision the information collected by machines devices and sensors they make up the iot or nowadays we are calling it as ioe internet of everything this whatever data is being collected is analyzed and contextualized by the artificial intelligence technologies and that's where ai is going to help in a bigger way to process and analyze and present it to the user in a much more meaningful and useful way as compared to whatever we have at present so for this to happen fusion of these three technologies have to take place so that decision making may be better and it can deliver a personalized experience to the users as compared to whatever we had earlier or at present so there are many uncertainties and challenges to be addressed so that's why the research has to go on and it is a ever growing activity the academic institutions industries as well as research organization we should have a bigger role in coordinating research to see that all these things are taken into consideration this fusion is possible because artificial intelligence is becoming more and more sophisticated as days are progressing and you are having machine to machine learning tools which are available to create more advanced algorithms in that way ml is another technology that is to be taken into consideration and iot is also becoming much closer to the mainstream phenomena and it is being accepted just because of the pandemic it has slowed down but it is catching up in a big way so to have proper communication short all communication at higher speed with large data processing the with latency very low latency 5g can help in a bigger way so it's a missing element which can bring these technologies so that the intelligent connective vision can be taken into consideration so with this basic idea we will be looking into some basic aspects of iot and then the other technologies and finally go into connectivity so what is this iot so it is really a new revolution which we call it as future internet since 1990s we had the first generation of internet connecting human beings on earth and now we are thinking of connecting everything on earth that is moving from internet of people to internet of things and this requires short range communication networks and high speed with low latency is required so earlier we had we were thinking of passive sending and receiving now we want to have this to be converted into active query and react so that's where the changes are happening from first generation to second generation internet and this we are looking towards as ioe or iot and we live in a physical world and we are entering into a digital world already the digital world has taken into a main place with the pandemic since 2 years so this has to have a proper integration so that we will be getting whatever is the results or the advantages corresponding to various technologies 
normally we lift the words connecting connection of everything anything anyone any time or at any place so this is to have a better or smarter environment so here objects they make themselves recognizable as people are made recognizable and they get intelligence as they can communicate information about themselves and they can access information also which has been aggregated by other things so that's where we are looking into by whatever we had with respect to human beings we are thinking in terms of for the objects also and everything we want to have as smarter surroundings it starts from a smart home and smart movement that is smart vehicles going towards a smart office and smart city ultimately and in addition to that the industries are also looking towards how these things can be taken upon that is iot industrial iot and logistics and smart farming that's where we need and then better grid operations and smooth with smart grid operations and whatever we are facing now that needs really a smart healthcare operations so that's what we are looking towards when we look into these connectivities so there are four key technologies applied technologies one is to have identification all of us are having identification whereas an object has to be identified for tracking and data collection and this is this can be done by our fid and sensors are needed depending upon the requirement it can be dynamic sensing or a static sensing at equal intervals and this is to collect data and to go towards the processing to know the physical status of things at regular intervals and need, we need smart technology for processing and to have real time operations and to see that different parts of the network work in unison and finally we look towards miniaturization where smaller things are needed to have the ability to connect and interact with most of the things whatever you want whenever you look into networking we always think of architecture so it can be a three layer model or it can be a four layer model or well, multi layer models depending upon how much work is involved basically the topmost layer is always the application layer open to atmosphere means we can do anything with application layer and the bottom lowest layer as we saw see in the other layers that is data link layer here we call it as a sensor layer where we are sensing or getting data from various sensors whatever you can think of that can be obtained and in between is the networking layer which will be giving the connectivity so this is three layer but as we are looking towards more and more of networking and more things are getting involved we are looking into one is information processing where we can see the intelligence artificial intelligence comes into picture that is smart decisions and data centers data collection search engines and data mining so once again when you look towards all these technologies they are all interdisciplinary and that's where we are looking towards the various activities and another things we look towards at the end is green environment so whenever you are trying to add up all these things we should not have additional problems coming into picture so there's where green technology is also important and this network construction it goes on improving so we are looking towards the under the sea or over the earth and into the space also so we are looking towards networking from all points of view and sensing anything you look towards that can be sensed so there are various challenges one other thing is when you are looking towards at a global level connecting everything and all the human beings into a network the standardization is most of the costly required so this remains somewhat fragmented and this is to be taken into consideration when everything is connected with all human beings what with the amount of security and privacy needed this has to be taken into consideration and billion people 7 to 8 billion people are there and when you are adding up these things are also connected what will be the vulnerability of things connected that is more than a trillion so every single device and sensor can act as a potential risk if it is not handled properly and once again another thing is data integrity and then trust that's where we will be always looking towards whenever we look into some of the things that is happening at the global level or at this country level how sure the organization can be trusted that integrity has not been traded out so every household item can become an 
potential risk if it is not properly utilized because the hacking criminals are always there cyber crime so we have to look towards all these challenges also so there is lot of potential for research and the things to be taken into consideration so once again we should not keep in that way challenges are always there and we have to see that these things are all taken into consideration one is by legal and regulatory acts and technical control which as engineers and technocrats we can always look towards these things and ethics is one of the major thing we should have social ethics and that has to be then only everything can be taken into proper potential and as it stands with respect to many of the technologies self regulation takes place once these technologies come into the market so that's where we are aiming at so if you look towards the connected world so one is it is expected that at least seven devices are connected to each person on earth so it is at least 50 billion connections will be there in within few years another one is with respect to retail more than 70% will be looking towards retailing with by using this intelligent systems and vehicles are becoming more automated driverless vehicles and then drones and automated movement and logistics so it is going to come up in a big way and as i was saying earlier the medical or health care is going to play a big role or all these technologies are going to have a big role with health care and iot has already come into picture with robotics playing a big role with the artificial intelligence helping the robotics so the more than 30% are trying to have this robotics coming into picture as i was mentioning everything is connected to have a smart world so to have a sustainable condition with respect to the energy efficiency there is requirement of the sustainability so that is greening conditions so green iot looks towards the energy consumptions so that the requirements of smart world is taken into in better perspective so the life cycle has to be looked upon start from starting to the end so you should focus on green design green production green utilization and finally green disposal and recycling so all these things are normally very easy to tell but once again lot of work has to be done so there's very challenge lies for most of us who are all the technology players and engineers so next we look towards 5g which is a technology it has already it has come to picture in more than thousand cities all over the world has got 5g implemented we are at to get by 22 we are expected to by independence day we are expected to have 5g implemented so when you look towards the generations the data rate is increasing from kilobits per seconds to several tens of kilobits per seconds megabits per second to tens of megabits per seconds to ultimately gigabits per second that's what we are expecting from 5g and earlier it was only for voice transmission later the various things were added up and mobile internet and now we want to have everything connected through a handheld device so that's where we are expecting 5g to be developed but already the thinking has started that 5g may not be sufficient to take care of the internet of everything when whatever you are expecting towards the smart environment comes into picture so thinking or research has already started towards 6g where we are looking towards still higher data rates high speed and lower latency to have more real time operations taken into consideration so if you look towards 5g at least 1 gbps it is supposed to be the network or cell density will be increasing at least by 100 times to 1000 times exabytes and latency will be 1 millisecond as compared to 50 in 4g or 500 in 3g and there is a paradigm shift needed to look towards the 5g operations where we need high carrier frequencies with larger bandwidth to take care of gigabits per seconds of speed and the base stations and device densities will be enormous and the number of antennas we are looking towards will be quite heavy so the flexibility and intelligence is more needed and spectral relation how to be we thought of and more considerations for energy and cost efficiency so that we look towards the greener technologies 
as i told you earlier data rates and bandwidth and coverage of is one of the major requirement so 1 to 10 gbps data rate is in real networks at least even if you get 1 gbps it is probably quite sufficient round trip latency 1 millisecond to less than that high bandwidth in unit area that's what is expected enormous number of connected devices in terms of billions and what we expect is anytime anyway nearly 100 percent coverage we should never have failure of connectivity that's what is expected and energy reduction around 190 percent reduction and this is where we are looking towards green technology another thing is high battery life the reduction in power requirement by the devices uh, used for 5g device 5g sets and it is expected that 99.39 percentage the availability should be there for 5g networks wherever you are at whatever speed you are moving and in the outdoor port in the globe you are situated so that's what we expect so these things are all very good to tell but once again wireless industries academia research organizations they're all collaborating in different aspects and 5g has been already realized to a certain extent so we look towards the new horizon we are looking towards millimeter wave and submillimeter wave going beyond 3g so below 3 gigahertz we are using at present and as we see if you go to high frequency ranges the distance that can be covered goes on reducing so when you go towards different frequency ranges beyond 3 gigahertz it can be a macro coverage of 0.5 to 2 kilometers or micro coverage of 100 meter radius or it can be still smaller so we are dealing with the pico cells femto cells macro cells and micro cells as compared to the similar types of cells in 4G and below. So that's the way challenge rates. So if you look towards the beachfront spectrum, below 3 GHz, what we are using, some bands are not useful because of absorption band. But you can see that there are three bands where more than 352 GHz bandwidth is available. And these are considered for our 5G operations when you look towards the spectrum allocations. So always there is a problem with millimeter wave or submillimeter wave conditions. Path loss is heavy with when you go towards high frequencies, signal to noise ratio problems comes into picture with wider bandwidths and the attenuation of signal by various things happening in the atmosphere, water vapor, oxygen and other things that will be hampering the performance. This has to be taken into consideration and the antenna structure and the antenna design everything has to be taken in a different perspective so that we can realize whatever is needed with 5G. So the architecture, if you look into the, we were having base centric condition as it stands, BSEs and MSEs used to control the human beings with cell phones. Now we are looking towards more towards user centric and that's where you can see that the device to device connection also is possible and devices also participate. So here you can see that M2M communication, device to device, internet of things, internet of vehicles, and when you are moving at a high speed, smaller cells, and space division multiple access, various types of beam forming and the antenna techniques, multiple input, multiple output, cloud computing is going to play a big role. So you can see that the 5G networks, they want to have, they need all these things. Some of the services it look towards, one is mobile internet, another is internet of things and anything you can put, they can be taken into consideration. But the one thing is not all requires same data rate or latency. One is the one for low speed applications like meter reading and another for high speed applications for video monitoring and delay sensitive and non-delay sensitive depending upon applications the vehicle to vehicle communication needs a delay sensitive approach whereas the normal applications in our daily life like meter reading and other aspects need non-delay sensitive requirements so not all require high latency low latency and high data rates the various performance indicators are there earlier we used to look towards bits per second per hertz now we are looking per unit area also the another thing is bits per joule that is we are looking towards the energy efficiency 
and the applications if you look towards the one is human to human already we are having human to machine and machine to gene depending upon the various factors we are looking towards where you can apply these things and here you can see that vehicle to vehicle and then vehicle to infrastructure or robotics health care so you can see the various applications can be taken into consideration with 5g so we look towards the enabling technologies millimeter waves massive mimo multiple input multiple output condition non orthogonal transmissions earlier we were looking towards ofdm now we are looking towards non orthogonal transmission ultra dense deployment because of high density in the networks high frequency communication of micro ranges full duplex operation coding and modulation techniques small devices and device to device so everywhere we we need standardization 3gpp i looking towards these things and 5g nr is a standard that has been considered release 15 has already taken place release 16 in july 2020 and release 17 enhanced version by 22 and 18 5g advanced which is going towards 6g also all these things are about 5g so these things i will not look into these things there for 6g the third technology is artificial intelligence the human beings animals we have natural intelligence whereas a can is called machine intelligence and it is intelligence demonstrated by machines it can also be defined as the ability to interpret external data to learn from such data and to use these things to achieve specific goals through practical options heavily used in robotics that's where iot is playing a big role so one is analysis it all it revolves around the algorithms for which ai is capable of learning from data or can themselves write other algorithms in that condition machine learning is one of the concept which is very much required and one of the major problem with ai at present is it lacks several features of human common sense reasoning as space time and physical interactions to understand human language natural language processing is required and machine perception is required based upon the input data from the sensors it may be a camera or a microphone or a wireless signal or a lidar sonar or tactile that is for touch sensors so that you can have various suspects can be deduced speech recognition facial recognition all these things are required when you want to have really a smarter world it can also be a danger to humanity if the progress is not controlled may create a risk of mass unemployment as all people expect with these basic ideas we look towards the final for intelligent connectivity so this connectivity which basically we have got intelligent connectivity as human beings because of god given or nature given aspects for us but this is to be imported into the things also so that we can interact with them in a better way to have a smarter world one is for public safety industrial manufacturing operations health care transportation and logistics and various sectors so if you want to look towards public safety and security it can make cities much more safer as we have seen in goal by the this is where smart city operation comes in the picture and the video surveillance security systems or these things can be taken into consideration and this can be connected in a better way to have much more smarter connectivity and security so video surveillance and sir, security is a thing as i was telling you earlier so what we are looking towards is transmission of real time high quality videos to enhance remote surveillance and better assessment of crime scenes as compared to whatever we have the present day cameras which are more or less just cameras they based systems they automatically analyze activities body language facial expression of suspects detect crimes and spot offenders in real time for tracking suspicious characters as they move among the field of view of different cameras so by analyzing the data and past time crimes ai based platform can predict future offenses also 
and they can optimize the use of crime prevention resources. So that's where we are looking towards the crime security. With respect to industry, productivity increases, human errors can be reduced, cost can be reduced, worker safety will be increased, remote operation is possible even at a place where people are not thinking to have an industry. This is lowering the risk of on-site employees. So we can choose a location which is far off and still you can have all the advantages. So this has a, as a case study, it has been already tried and in one of the stadium it has been tried in Japan. The trial involves the remote monitoring of a delivery robot, ID verification at the stadium using a drone and the live streaming of 360 degrees degree virtual reality video of the stadium. So that's where we look towards how it can be implemented in a stadium. Healthcare, as I told you, it is one of the major important to be taken into consideration. So it helps to provide effective preventive care. Prevention is always better than curing. That's what doctors tell. So which we are looking towards so that the healthcare managers can optimize their resources. So this is one of the thing which we are facing with respect to the pandemic now. It can facilitate remote diagnosis and enable remote surgery with robotics helping in a big way. Can revolutionize access to medical care than today. With respect to geographical location of medical experts. So experts are always available in mega cities or bigger hospitals, multi specialty hospitals, but this is so that's where we are expecting. So what we require is tactile or real time case of connectivity. There's where 5G or looking towards 6G will help to have this connectivity. So here what we want is a real time operation means the latency has to be less than one millisecond. It should be high speed operation. The reliability should be there for nearly 99.39 percentage available all the time so that it will be enabling the doctors and healthcare workers to provide a medical examination from remote locations with full audio visual and haptic feedback. So a touch also can be added up with the sensors whereas doctor is not needed to touch the patient and look towards so that's the way the robotics play a big role. Making it possible to provide a diagnosis anywhere at any time to perform surgery by operating specific specialized robots using 5G and IoT technologies. So this has been already tested once again by ETT.com in Japan and the, on the left hand side you can see a multi good hospital, multi-specialty hospital whereas on the other side you are having a public healthcare center connected through a 5G tunnel, a simple doctor or a basic doctor can have the expertise of a medical specialist through patient and he can perform whatever is expected. And if problems to help in a big time, the thing which can be taken into consideration is rotation and logic. And it can help also drivers. So another one is self-driving vehicles and unmanned vehicles. And these are already thinking has come into the picture. And this will give the driver also in a better way to help the accidents can be avoided and you can have a better way of traveling or movement. And drones are already there to deliver goods. It has been tried also in the pandemic to supply medicine to remote areas and this is going to play a bigger role with these three technologies. Ultimately, it can be a personal assistance. You may not have a good combination of these technologies. It can have better retrieval of information, reservations can be done or buy goods. Cloud-based game servers can be used for players to enjoy video games without the need of expensive equipments by making their immersive use of audio the 
AR, VR, or extended reality XR. So with devices with haptic feedback, hologram or 3D displays can be had. And at a remote place, you can have this live sporting or music meant to be seen by people who cannot move. And that's what is possible. A 2020 match can be seen in real conditions at a with a 3D condition at a remote place by the parents or old parents and the son or daughter is sitting in the stadium. The combination of all these things enhance the real-time collection and analysis of data. And one other thing is the efficiency, energy efficiency is one of the things the, to irrigate fields, distribute goods and reduction of waste and pollution. You can see that everything is going towards a smarter city or a smarter world. Towards the end, the challenges are more. It is early to say that the era has come. All these elements, whatever I was talking, to have this vision, they are yet to reach maturity. Applications involve the aspects such as VR, AR and the tactile internet or self-driven vehicles are still at a very early stage of development. And the tactile internet means they should be available at ultra low latency with very high availability and reliability and security which is not there with our present internet connections. Technical and regulatory issues have to be taken into consideration. 5G at an infant stage, 